Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Alina. Hi, Alina. Hello. So I'm good so to be here. happy to have you. So I um, have met Alina. We did a little core transformation session last week, and it was so interesting and mind opening, therapeutic. It was so calming. It was such a gentle process. I feel like everybody should have it done. And I'm not just saying that. But can you tell the listeners and watchers now, viewers, um, what is core transformation and who needs it? I would love to talk about core transformation. <laughs> so this is a gentle process that helps folks work with different parts of themselves. Like you may you may have um, probably even heard this in your own language. Like there's a part of me that wants you know, cake. And there's another part of me that wants to be healthy or yes. a part of me wants to go to this party and a part of me wants to to stay home. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so this method kind of helps folks work with different parts of themselves to transform patterns of behavior, thinking and feeling that maybe they don't like, or they want to change. Um, so if there is something in your life that you find yourself like reacting to in a way that you'd like to change, or maybe you have a habit that you'd like to, um, that you'd like to change. Right. Or maybe you have a certain way that you feel on a daily basis that you're like, you know, I'd really like to feel more peaceful or more content or happier, or more joyful. Right. This is things that this method can be helpful with. And, um, that's probably the, the shortest way to, to describe it. And probably what's one of the more unique things about it is that when um, a guide like me, or if you're guiding yourself, you can do that too. When you're going through this process, um, you can step into what's called a profound core state. And this is a state of being that you can have regardless of your circumstances in your life. And, um, you know, Don, I'd like to hear about your experience since you got to experience one of these core states. But like for a lot of folks, it's it's like a visceral feeling in the body. Um, and it's like a, sometimes it's very like peaceful and other times it's expansive. And I don't know, I've, I think I've shared a little uh, story with you about how I felt like I was a particle in space and <laughs> had like a giant sun somewhere in the distance beaming unconditional love to me. So right. it's different every time. Yeah. Well, what I was, okay. So, and I'm, I'm fine divulging this, like for, for me, one of the things, like, I just felt like I should come with some topic. It would, I could have a lot of topics, <laughs> but I had to pin it down and it was how I get overwhelmed with choices how I feel like when I have so many choices, I get overwhelmed and I want to just shut down and just like, okay, forget it, forget it, you know? And so, you know, we went through this very lengthy process, like way deeper than I anticipated. And for me afterwards, I felt a lot lighter. I did because I didn't realize how much weight that was, I was putting on myself and how it was just a matter of me changing my thought process to get rid of that burden. So when I went out to eat, and because I told you how it's a menu, like a menu is a good example. There's so many choices. The, the we go out to eat all the time. And the last time we went out to eat, I start I didn't get overwhelmed. It wasn't, it's not like serious, but I did feel like, oh my gosh here we are again, here's all the choices. And I just said, Dawn, make a choice. It's not your last meal. Just, it's okay. Choose what you like. You know what you like, just choose what you like. And so I did, I was just like, well, this is easy. Why have I made it so difficult this whole time? But my question for you is when we do get in that state of reverting back to the way that we have felt maybe our whole lives, for sure, you know, all of our adult lives, how do we transition at that moment? How do we get back to that place of calm and peace and being able to sort it out? Yeah, that's a great question. And so happy to hear that it, it felt easier for you now. Um, so you've peeled back a layer of an onion 
congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and, and you have more to grow and learn from, right? In, your, in yeah. your lifetime. And especially as you mentioned, yes, things that have been with us for a long time, right? Maybe s- for most of us, it's actually since our childhood, right? Mm-hmm. You've probably, a lot of your guests, you guys probably talk about, you know, formative years. For sure. Before, before age eight, like how much that forms our inner world and how we, um, it kind of, it kind of creates these like lenses that we see the world through, um, right. our experiences in those years, right. It does that. And so, yeah, um, actually one of the big ahas I had when I first started working, um, learning about subconscious work is like how our, it's not just physical things that are habits. So like, you know, I have a habit of brushing my teeth in the morning or like a habit of, I don't know, driving, right? I know how to drive. Right, (laughs) right. But like, what I didn't recognize is that our thoughts and our, our thoughts and also our reactions can be habituated as well. Right. And our subconscious mind kind of chooses these like, hmm, easy pathways that it's formed the neural pathways that it's formed in the brain of like what's the easy path and if you have chosen for the last two decades of your life to be overwhelmed when you look at a menu let's just say right if you're like oh god (laughs) um (laughs) it sounds um, so dumb (laughs) no well and see this is what you're saying is like you also didn't consciously choose that you're not like okay i'm gonna sit down at this table and I'm going to look at the menu and when I look at it I'm going to freak out internally right. <laughs> you, you're, not, you're not doing that it just kind of happens right automatically which means that it's just a subconscious automatic process that's been learned as a habit so um these kinds of methods like core transformation helps you naturally create new pathways like a new a new way of being so now you have experienced actually viscerally you've experienced a different option, right? You now have like an inner resource that you've unlocked for yourself through this process. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to experience similar responses, that just means that there's other parts that like would need to go through the same process. Um, And the people who teach this process have said that like they have yet to meet a person who has worked with all their parts. So it's like, um, <laughs> and I kind of have a spiritual belief that if you are, um, on this planet still alive, there's probably still something for you to learn and go from a hundred percent. When you, you kind of stop learning, you stop growing. And then what's the point of life at that point? I totally believe in that a hundred percent. Um, okay. So I, I saw, and I had done research on you prior, but I did not realize that you were in a financial background before what happened what happened you don't just (laughs) go from numbers to all of a sudden did you have an awakening or what happened yeah so I did I used to be a CPA and um did did the whole thing right went to grad school got my license worked for a decade as a CPA and in 2018 the firm that I was working for um it had new ownership so a new person bought it and I decided to leave at that point um, and start a business with um, actually the person who sold the firm and some other people because we kind of had ideas on like we saw that the accounting industry was heading more towards like the advisory role versus like just focusing on oh, I'll do your tax return or I'll okay. do your books right just becoming more of a trusted advisor so we were wondering like how can we help with that and I spent um, almost two years creating like uh, educational material for entrepreneurs so that we could kind of have them partner with accounting professionals to bring that education to them. Mm-hmm. It was just, um, <laughs> it was a very curious experience. Right. Right. Where do I fit in? How do I fit into this whole picture? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, uh, I quit my job to do that and to start this partnership, this kind of startup. So, and it was a lot of skills that I haven't really I used a lot of skills that I haven't used in the past, right? Because I was primarily doing taxes, uh, bookkeeping. Um, the person that I was working for at the time was like really great in helping develop me as a professional to like 
go out and do sales and marketing. So I was kind of getting some of these like skills, but not, not like this. I was like designing and creating little games and I went into like e-learning world, which I didn't even know existed. And that's when I (laughs) kind of got it, got acquainted with this um, world of online business, you know, Mm -hmm. by the time that I left that partnership, um, like I was like, well, do I go back to accounting? Because I just unlocked all this stuff. (laughs) I learned so much. Now what am I going to do? Yeah. So I didn't. I did not go back to accounting. That was 2020. As you know, um, well, as everyone knows, the the world was in a big change of big place of transformation, right? Yeah. A lot of people, I think, were asking that question of like, what do I want to do? Right. It was such a time for a reflection for people. Just everybody had to slow down and think mm-hmm. about what what they were doing for their job or in their lives. I mean, I couldn't imagine for people that were in terrible relationships to be stuck at home and facing all of that. Like we were all brought to face our demons or what we're doing in our lives. Yeah. So I think for a lot of people, the people that got sick, obviously it wasn't a good thing, but the people that were home and just waiting for a lot of those people, it ended up being kind of a good thing, a wake up call. Hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking like a giant pattern interrupt, you know, you were asking like how, what happens when you like go back into your old patterns and like, how can you return back into the resourceful states? It's like one way is a pattern interrupt. (laughs) That's a big one. Having the world shut down. So why, why core transformation? Uh huh. So I started to delve into subconscious reprogramming because, um, like going from that, I would say traditional life path. So I was also mm-hmm. born in Russia. I lived there till I was nine. So that was my formative years. Um, so you could imagine what my value system was, which was like, and I think it is for a lot of folks who are probably my age, unless they had a different upbringing, but like mm-hmm. the, the values of like, safety um you know education like being being perfect or like being one of the best um you know yeah. listening to authority figures and like behaving well these kinds of things were like really high on my values list growing up mm-hmm. um and so going from that to moving to america which I, to me it feels like it truly does feel like there's a lot of freedom here um, compared to some other places, like I'm just sure. the, just the ability to like be, <laughs> I know right. that not everyone, not everyone can feel that way right now. Um, but, but just for, speaking from my experience and, um, yeah, going from that to like, okay, I'm going to do this accounting career because it's safe and I know I'm going to get a job and my parents are going to be proud of me. Society is going to be proud of me. I'm going to get my paycheck. I'm going to pay for my things. People are going to see me and go like, she's got her life together. It's exactly what happened. (laughs) Going from that to like, you know, okay. The universe (laughs) is like, I don't think she's going to stop. I'm going to like throw, throw a little wrench in her plan, even though it's so many more people than just me, you know? Right. Um, Right. Like we're going to give her a fork in the road moment where she's going to choose to either like continue this accounting career or do something different right so so yeah um gosh I forgot what your question was now um (laughs) (laughs) me too oh (laughs) gosh how you went from numbers why oh why um why why core transformation transformation. yeah 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 yeah. kind of gave you a long answer to that well (laughs) that's okay I I started to I started to look at subconscious street programming because it has been the the subconscious reprogramming is kind of like, you know, a blanket term of different tools and methods that you can use like hypnosis or mm-hmm. core transformation or whatever, whatever all these things are um, to create change on a subconscious level. So all of these behaviors and reactions that we have that are just automatic, like we don't think about them. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we change that? Because we can't do it by thinking or willpower. So I was like, okay, I need to reprogram my learned ways of being from age zero to how how old was I 
30 something. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> right? That is a lot. Yeah. So how do you unlearn valuing being the safe employee who, you know, their her parents are proud of her, society's proud of her. She values like being financially independent and all of these things. Like it's hard to go from that to entrepreneur, which is like, you make your own rules. No one's going to tell you what to do. Right. Uh, You're the boss. Oh, yeah. Like express your authentic nature. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> like, what is my authentic <laughs> nature? <laughs> I don't you even know? know what I think it is. Yeah. Um, and just having all these, all this mind chatter about like, you're not good enough. You don't have this experience. People aren't going to work with you. You don't, you don't have money yet. You're not successful. People are going to think you're a fraud, blah, blah, blah. Like all of this, like just mind chatter. And you, it's really hard to think your way out of that yeah. or willpower your way through that. And that's what a lot of people do is like, okay, here's another day. I'm going to like be a big, bold, brave business owner. Um, and it can get, it can get exhausting to continue to willpower your way through. So mm -hmm. subconscious reprogramming and specifically core transformation have like allowed that process to be a lot easier for me. So I, it, it feels so much easier not to have to will my way through becoming who I think is the more authentic, genuine version of me like who I am underneath all this stuff like who I am underneath um that I'm from Russia and that um I used to be an accountant and all my skills and that I'm a wife and that I'm a dog mom and like who am I underneath all these labels and society societal conditioning yeah and and labels like that is such a thing like who are you and oh, I am a mom and I have three kids. And it's like, okay, besides that, like, who are yeah. you? And, and you, you do, you, you, it's all the, um, the labels, the not stereotypes, the categories or whatever that you, oh, I fit in that slot and I fit in that slot. But yeah, when you sit with yourself and you really get down deep, it's like, who are you really? What, what do you really feel? Not what you were told to feel or not what you were told to believe. Like the whole belief system thing is just so mind blowing to me because it's like, we all think how we think maybe because somebody else thought it. And isn't that nuts? Like it's nuts to me. Like the people that, and this is, I'm not getting controversial here, people, but the people that are very political like so political and it's like well is it because is it really because of what you feel down deep or is it because your dad was a democrat and your grandpa was a democrat and you're a republican whichever it's, sure. and i think i think it, it definitely plays a role I mean, whatever you learned before age 10, before age, whatever, people have different ages, eight, mm -hmm. seven, like whatever that was probably, yeah, plays a big part in who you are today. That, 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 there's nothing you could have done about that. That's literally just how you were. That's how your brain was functioning at the time. It was like a sponge. You know, right. when we talk about um, hypnosis, how hypnosis works or how yeah, how hypnosis works is that, you know, we put you into kind of like a relaxed state, right? Which, which allows your brain to slow down to a certain uh, a brainwave wavelength, right? Right. And so in that, in that um, brainwave state, you can receive new information much easier. So it, it works on the subconscious level. Like when you are a child, that is your brain state naturally. You don't have to be put into oh, hypnosis. Oh, okay. That makes yeah, so sense. You're, you're just in a perpetual state of hypnosis until you're like eight. I want to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, we could get into, we can get into a deeper philosophical discussion about spirituality and like all of these things, all these experiences that you had that I had, like they in a way we signed up for them, you know, I'm right. so grateful. 
it's just it's just when I think about it, it's hilarious to me. I'm like, really, this is this is what I signed up for. I signed up to like grow up in Russia and like have all these hilarious like value systems where I just feared everybody and like never listened to myself and only listened to authority figures. And now right. like now I need to be the authority figure. That's hilarious. That's just funny. Yeah, <laughs> life is funny. And I wrote down because I don't want to forget to ask. Do we tell ourselves these things and our mind listens? So um, me mm. say, I'm so unorganized. I'm just the most unorganized person. Does that play a role in me being disorganized? Me saying it all the time? Um, is that telling my subconscious all the time? Oh, okay. Then that's how it's going to play out. Is that how it works? Yeah. I mean, you're reaffirming an identity, right? You said, you said the words I am. So okay. whatever goes after that is what you're reaffirming to yourself. And I kind of like to, um, I like to, to think about this in question form as well. Like sometimes it's not a thought that we're having like, Oh, I'm so disorganized. Right. I'm like, why am I, why am I so messy? Like, why can't I just get my stuff together? Yeah. Right. And so when you're asking that, you think that you're just asking a rhetorical question that no one's going to answer um, unless someone's sitting there and they can give you feedback. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you're usually but, talking to yourself that way. Yeah. But you're, but you're speaking to your subconscious and your subconscious goes, why are you so messy? And then it shows you evidence to confirm why you're so messy. Oh, look, there's a mess in the corner. Oh, my bedroom's a mess. Oh, like my mind's a mess. Where else in your life were you a mess? <laughs> right? Like, um, if you look for it, you'll find it. Yeah. But on the other hand, what if you asked a different question that might sound weird and funny, but like, why am I so organized? Or like, why, why do things go so well for me? Like, why do things work out? Why am I so creative? Mm -hmm. I just wrote an email about this. I'm like, why am I so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Can't even help it. Um, no, I heard of what is that lucky girl something? Lucky girl, not syndrome, but where oh, yeah, 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 you yeah. sit there and oh, I'm just so lucky. I'm so lucky. And you see TikToks and people are like, try it, try it for a week. Just sit there and say, I'm so lucky. Every day I'm so well, I could remember that for like five minutes and then <laughs> and life happens. I think it's like, oh, why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you're you're speaking to something really important there is like that requires willpower. It, it requires it requires you consciously remembering, oh, no, I'm not going to talk that way. I'm going to say, why, why am I so organized or whatever, right? Right, like, right. So the subconscious work helps you not have to do that. Like when you can commit to like a consistent practice of it, it helps you do these things automatically. Like it helps you just automatically have more grace for yourself. Automatically step into peace and choose, make a choice. Um, like that's the best way I can describe it is you just don't have to try. Right. Because you're, ma you're making these changes on a deep level versus like willing your way into a certain experience. I think those things are very, very helpful because they're fast. And I can teach you them in a few minutes or in a few seconds. Feel like, listen, like what's a really good uh, pattern interrupt? Um, I mean, like you might have heard the five, four, three, two, one. Like five things you see, you know, three things or four things that you can like hear, three things that you can feel. Like that brings you into a really quick, grounded place because you're here in the now. Okay, okay. bringing you to the present. Yeah. But again, you, you gotta do that. Like you gotta remember to do that or deep breathing, take a few deep breaths. Great pattern interrupt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, just in my podcast last week, he talked about putting a, a dot or something on your hand. So every time you saw it, it reminded you to be mindful of your, your body, how you're carrying your body and your posture and your breath and just seeing it makes you zero in yes. on the moment. So yes. do you have to hypnotize people? I mean, you didn't with me, but do no. you incorporate that? 
I actually have not been using a lot of hypnosis. Like since learning core transformation, I've just found it to be so much easier, um, so much faster, mm -hmm. so much more effective. Uh, this is my experience. I have like, I'm not, um, I had a certification in hypnosis, um, but not like, I haven't gone to like all the different types. You know, there's so many different, so many different ways. So like, yeah, core transformation has been the easiest. And yeah, I don't need to put anybody into like hypnotic trance or anything like that. So it's amazing. <laughs> this is basically me asking for your help to help my mom. How okay. do you stop worrying? How do you stop worrying? How, well, what's a good place to start if you are a habitual worrier? Mm, yeah. Well, from the work standpoint that I do, right? Mm -hmm. it, if we look at core transformation, I would probably ask your mom, right? Like, so you would like to change these, this feeling of worry, right? And I would say, when do you worry? Like, let's just have an example, a more specific example, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what she would say. Uh, let's say just um, when one of us is out driving and the weather's bad, but that's yeah. a normal thing. Like that's normal for people to worry, but she worries. She worries about everything all the time. Things that don't even need worrying about that, that could never transpire. She's worrying right. about it. Yeah. Right. And part of that is maybe because of what we talked about before. It's just this habitual um, learned behavior in the body, which actually with emotions, I didn't mention earlier, there are also chemicals involved that when you feel a certain emotion, your body triggers certain chemicals inside the body, like hormones, right? And then your body gets kind of like addicted to those chemicals. So um, that is also why you might feel an emotion, even though you don't want to feel it because you like know it's anxiety. not. Mm -hmm. Like anxiety. Well, that, that, yeah, that could also be something. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say inside the brain, but it's all hormone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that it seems like. I don't want to sound unsensitive or insensitive. Um, like always drama, always things happening to them. Oh, this always happens. And here that's, this is happening and that's happening. That's, and it's like, why is it, is it bad luck or is it just their reactions to it? Or does everything seem grandiose? Yeah. Well, if you have a habit of that and you ask yourself, why does that always happen to me? Then I'm not saying that the only reason why things are happening to someone is because they're thinking and they have subconscious stuff. Right. Cause things happen but, to people. Right. right. But like, it's, it's probably playing a big role. Like if I say, why, why does all this happen to me all the time? I'm probably going to find a lot more evidence in my life of it happening more. Right. Cause you're, uh, you're making yourself aware. Right. Of all I'm looking of the for negative. It. Okay. I, I'm looking for, I'm looking for something to confirm what I am subconsciously thinking. Um, so yeah, it's okay if someone experiences something in a lot of different cases. It doesn't really matter. For the subconscious work, you just need one entryway, like one point of entry. So okay, what is one time that you worry? Okay, when my kids are going to be driving and it's bad weather. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So when was the last time that that happened? just the other week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you could put yourself back to that, to that place, basically I can turn, have an internal experience, like see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt at the time. And then tell me where in the body or somewhere around you, you sense the sense of worry mm -hmm. because it's as if like some unconscious part of you is generating this worry. It's not you like consciously thinking I'm going to worry now. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the worry kicks <laughs> off yeah All right just kind of happens so where right. do you sense that in your body or around you and then we can kind of work with this um part that generates the worry um as like a part like like a little i don't know person or character mm -hmm. inside of you or somewhere around you right you're like hey part <laughs> Thank you for being here, right? Because kind of like what we're what me and you were doing is like mm -hmm. I don't I'm not thanking you for worrying um and having this behavior. I'm thanking you because 
I know you have a positive purpose that's deeper than that. Trying like to protect you from something. Something like that, right? There's a reason yeah. why this worry is happening that's more positive than the behavior itself. So then we keep kind of working with it and asking like, okay, what do you want part? And the part's like, I don't know what it could say. I want to want to make sure my kids are okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank the part for the response and then invite the part to step into what it's like to already have your kids being okay. So this is kind of like a, the inviting the part to have an experience of already having what it wants, even if it's unrealistic or whatever, because it's all happening in the imagination, which. Right. Yeah. It's all possible. in your mind anyway, whether it's worrying or at peace. Yes. It's how you're, you're perceiving all of it. Yeah. And as you were going through this, cause you experienced this, like, mm -hmm. what was your experience like? Cause that's basically the, the biggest part of the process is like part, what do you want? Oh, you want, uh, I don't know, joy. Well, and I invite you to step into what it's like to have joy. And then the part steps in and I go, great. What do you want? That's even deeper. And then okay, step into that. What do you want? That's even deeper step into that. Right. So like, what was that like for you to experience? Well, it was, it was, um, it was, I, you just kept wanting to go deeper and deeper. And I thought, well, we're there. And then you're like, okay, no, we're not. Uh, it's even deeper than that. And it went from being overwhelmed all the time to all the choices, everything, everything to being at peace. I just wanted to be at peace, to feel peaceful and not all the things. And nobody wants to feel chaotic and crazed and all that. But when you're, when you're feeling it, it doesn't matter. It's just there, you're feeling it. And so it's, it was so helpful to realize that something somewhere deep down, deep down, someone was trying to protect me, but at the end of the day, it just, I just wanted peace. So mm -hmm. that was, it was an interesting little experiment for sure. And yeah, I just want to make sure that I can keep it, keep it in a practical sense so that when it's not a menu and it is something that is a big pivotal choice. And that seems like I'm overwhelmed that I can get mm -hmm. myself back to that place of feeling fulfilled and in peace and not needing to get so overwhelmed. So, yeah. So you've had the one session experience, right? And so mm -hmm. now, now you, you can always go back if you put yourself into a present moment, like, let's say you're like, Oh, I'm catching myself being in that overwhelm. Right that's part of it is like when you when you haven't done this work consistently for like an extended period of time you kind of still have to like catch yourself as, as especially if it's been like a lifelong pattern right right be like catching myself like okay here i am in overwhelm let's take a deep breath like some kind of pattern interrupt right mm -hmm. something move your body like shake yourself whatever and then like okay i remember that there was this piece and it felt like my body could relax. My jaw could relax. I don't, I don't know what it is, but like right. giving yourself a couple minutes to maybe, cause your mind remembers, mm -hmm. like your mind remembers that experience. So you can go back to it anytime. Um, yeah. And that makes so much sense too, because your mind can put yourself back in a bad experience, a trauma. So why couldn't your mind put you into a state of calm? If it's been there, if it's had it experienced before you can put yourself back in there you absolutely can and <laughs> the more the more okay we had a little technical difficulties <laughs> so um what we were saying is that your mind you can put yourself in to a state of anxiety and uh, like how you feel when you're going through a traumatic situation so you should be able to is, is it tricking are you tricking your mind into feeling at peace is it fake it to make it? Is that what we're doing? I mean, I, I guess you could say that <laughs> you you have you have some kind of experience that you were referencing from before. Well, that's guess. true. Okay. Like if you have never experienced that, it might be really, really challenging for you to do. Unless, except if you want something, you always have a reference. 
that you are that, that you are referring to about that desire like i don't know what it's like to be a millionaire um but i could probably imagine like if one of my parts wanted to be a millionaire let's just say right mm -hmm. that's what it said it wanted i could say okay part i invite you to step into what it's like to already be a millionaire i'm referencing something i know millionaires so that's probably what I, it would be is like if i was what would that be like right whatever that looks like to me so maybe you haven't felt peace in your life but you if you said you want peace you have a reference point to that emotion so like all of these things are mm, like the subconscious work is what i want to get across is like the subconscious work is what makes it easier the subconscious work makes it to where you don't have to try and will your way to change your state of being. So how do I stop worrying? Some advice could be that, you know, you become aware that you worry. You become aware that you maybe have in the past called yourself a compulsive worrier or I always worry or that's just me. That's who I am. I'm a worrier. <laughs> like right. noticing, noticing what that you have made these kinds of comments in the past and then like consciously choosing you know what from now on I'm going to be more conscious when I use this language to correct myself I I always used to uh, I'm always a worry I mean what I meant was I used to worry in the past and now I'm learning to be a person who is more at peace like it, it takes it takes practice to build that new um language pattern in right you have and to be patient with it right if that's all you're doing you're doing the conscious work and that's how you are working on changing yourself from a worrier to a non-worrier it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot challenging for you a lot more challenging for you than if you were to also incorporate subconscious work like it makes it so much easier yes you're still gonna have to do the work of like being conscious with your language and your I am statements, mm -hmm. what, you, what you reaffirm to yourself, to your identity. And it's just going to be a lot more easier for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you help a lot of people that are in business and entrepreneurs and things like that. It, are, are there a lot of similar blocks across the board? Do you notice for these people? What, Absolutely. What's a common one? Yeah. I mean, anything to do with money and receiving, uh, charging, you know, people, people use the words charger worth, right? So charging the rates they want to charge. Um, but even like being in this like hmm, lack of clarity or not feeling completely aligned, like what direction do I go to next? Mm -hmm. right? I can't seem to choose or um, gosh, not feeling not feeling like you're enough in some way. Like I'm not experienced enough. I um, don't know enough. I'm not, I'm not enough of an expert to like talk on this, talk on this topic yet. I can't put myself out there until I have X number of clients or X number of revenue, mm -hmm. right? Like something like that. Those are pretty common. Is it that they set the bar too high for themselves or somebody in their childhood or around then put these bars up to a level that they don't feel like they'll ever get to? That's a great question. Um, you know, nobody in my childhood ever talked about entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but I will tell you that the bar was set pretty high for me as far as my performance in life, just in general. Right. Right. Like you better, you, it's not okay to just be a, a good enough student. You have to be the best student or one of the best. Um, it's not okay for you to be like somewhat behaved. You got to be the most, well, like people need to comment on how well behaved you are. Whoa. You know, like, <laughs> so if you take that kind of um, learning, right, as a child and apply mm -hmm. it to uh, what I'm doing now, entrepreneurship, I've experienced a lot of this, like not enoughness. Because I see myself and I'm like, how am I supposed to go out there and tell people that I can help them when I, when I don't even have like a six figure business yet? 
How am I supposed to like do all this when I don't have 20 years of experience being a subconscious practitioner? Like, okay. So what you're saying is brain that, uh, I'm never going to be that because I can't do that until I am that. And it's like, it's a big loop. How am I supposed to be, how am I supposed to go and start my business and start being successful? If what I, the prerequisite to do that is that I already need to be successful. Right. Any sense. Yeah. How you feel. It's all how you feel. If you feel like I've got this, I know that I'm going to be able to, you know, be your own cheerleader instead of waiting until, because I don't know if anybody ever feels like they reach the pinnacle, even millionaires or like, um, celebrities, you see celebrities. Like I remember when Michael Jordan stopped playing basketball and he went and played baseball. And I was like, or maybe it was golf. All I know is I was thinking, well, maybe it isn't was it golf. enough? Like <laughs> you're the best of the best and you need more still or people that are um, f- famous celebrities that are actors and then they become singers. And then they're, it's just like, I don't know that anybody ever feels like they've, they reach their bar. That's, that's an amazing perspective, Don. Um, <laughs> that's a very expanded perspective you know, that, that one could take if they have the awareness to do so. Um, and like through the subconscious work, I've been able to have more of an expanded perspective, like, wow, Alina, you're really backing yourself into a corner here by saying like, I can't help anyone until I've helped everyone. Like, I'm like, you're never going to get there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> why know, do we do that not, to ourselves? So right. Like how... <laughs> right. So how can you like expand your perspective about who you are and what are like, how can you expand these like rule sets that you have for yourself about like, if X, Y, and Z is not in place, then this is what's possible or this is what's not possible. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, can I just say that, um, can I tell a different perspective that because I have done the work to like study these methods, I've done the practice work. Um, I've worked with clients successfully. Um, I have an incredible like educational background that can help people with business. I've helped people with business successfully. Like, like how can you direct your attention to more of these, like, Hey, this is what is working. This is the evidence that proves that you can, and like are more than capable to go out and do these things and that you are enough. And that like, yeah, let's look forward to your future when like, what is it going to be like in 20 years when you've continually continued to do these things? Like, right. I'm not going to stop learning or growing. I'm not going to stop like evolving my craft. Also, Alina, you restarted your career. <laughs> like, yeah. Cut yourself some slack, Alina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, but it's hard to do. Um, when so much of your attention is on this, like, uh, old programming of like, yeah need the money need the success need the need the proudness of like people because this is what I've chased for so long subconsciously like I was never like okay what can I do to do this it was just more (laughs) like uh (laughs) it was it was just automatic it's like right these are my values that I don't talk about they're just kind of there in the background running my 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 direction in life and this is the direction I choose. And um, like, I don't really think about it or talk about it <laughs> until later when like a pattern interrupt happens, like, right. or, you know, my accounting firm being sold or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes it does take those big shakeups to mm-hmm. make us actually stop and think about what we're doing, get into robot mode. Um, there was some book, I'll send it to you when I, when I remember it. I'll send you the name, but it was something about how we're all doing it backwards, looking ahead from gain, 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 instead of looking back to where we've come from, mm, what we've yeah. accomplished, like recognizing what, what, what I was doing a year ago, like how far I have come 
in the last year, not where am I going to be in a year? What's going to be happening for me in a year? I mean, it's fine to plan and look forward and be excited. But if you're just so driven on the future and you forget about what all you did to get where you are right now. Yeah. Like, I think we've got it backwards. Yeah. Well, and I'm all about creating balance and harmony. So like, how can you honor how far you've come and like be excited about what's to come because you like none of us have any idea I think that's the other thing too is like how can we be content in the now and prepare ourselves for what's to come like we are in we are in a time of like incredible revolution like just evolution and revolution mm -hmm. <laughs> like a the the birth of not the birth but like the evolution of ai right right like it still blows my mind how a year ago um maybe a little bit before a year ago we didn't have chat gpt and now it's just like a thing that's like everyone's using it it's normal mm -hmm. no big deal no big deal that you can just type things into a chat and it like spits out all these things for you and can you can have a conversation with it and <laughs> it is it's mind-blowing it's like, exciting, but yeah. it's mind blowing. Fast forward that ten years from now, what do you think that's going to be like? Um, it's exponential growth, and um, it's really going to challenge us. I think, like, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see how it all transpires. But the mind is what always gets me, and AI doesn't have any. Yeah, any they can't touch that. <laughs> Not, not they can yet. try and think like <laughs> us. I don't know. I can't imagine a robot with emotions, but anyway, so do you, um, meet with people online? That's your, you solely, you don't go anywhere. You solely work. Okay. So tell people how they can reach out to you if they would like a core transformation, which it's pretty awesome. I had it done. So it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I would love to connect with you. Um, at my website, I'm sure we could put it in the show notes. So yep, for sure we will. But cool, alinanikushina.com. And then also I'm social media primarily. I'm on Instagram at heyalina. And I want to get more consistent posting this year about core transformation and subconscious work, these kinds of things. And if you go to my website, you can sign up for my free um, newsletter. I have a subconscious success Sunday newsletter. Um, it's primarily like I'm speaking to entrepreneurs, but like the tips I share in there about how to like partner with your subconscious mind, um, your body, your energy, these kinds of things, they're applicable to anybody. So um, yeah, I would love for you to sign up for that and like learn more about partnering with your subconscious so you can make things easier for you. So you don't have to keep relying on like willpower and force to create these changes in your life and change these patterns that you've had for probably your entire life because it's really right. hard to do. Yeah. Who doesn't want easier? <laughs> yeah. <Hey>, please. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you so much, Alina. Thanks for putting up with my technical lack of, oh, but I'm going to get more technical. That's what I'm going to tell myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get more techie. In it the may past. not have been, but <laughs> yes, in the past, like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, but it is in the past. The future, Dawn is going to be so techy. So thank you so much for putting up with that. And I appreciate it. And hopefully you can come back again. I'd like to delve more into it. I think it's just fascinating. Oh, yes. I would love to do that too. Thank okay. You. Awesome. All right. You take care and we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Sure, yes. Okay. okay.